One of my favorite things about physics is how it's universal, how we can learn things here on the surface of little old earth and have the power to explain phenomena across the entire universe. It just it just blows me away every single time. I absolutely love it. For, and I want to give you a few examples both this week and next week. Uh, and this week, I want to start with gravity. And gravity is really where it all started with this whole universal physics able to explain a variety of phenomena thing. Because for millennia, really... Anyone who thought about, you know, the motions of the objects in the heavens, like stars and planets, sun and moon, and life here on Earth thought they were totally separate. That there was one set of rules for the stuff up there, and then another set of rules for the stuff down here, and that's just the way it is. But beginning with the early days of the scientific revolution, we started to wonder if there might be some rules that apply both to us and up there. Uh, Johannes Kepler was the first to, or among the first, to really start thinking about this. He was looking for simple laws, simple mathematical expressions that could explain the motions of the planets. This is how he discovered that planets move in ellipses, uh, the equal area and equal time, all that kind of stuff. He didn't really have a scientific mindset to this. He was really trying to find patterns in the motions of planets to make better horoscopes. Not the most scientific approach, but hey, this is the, the opening days of the scientific revolution, so I'm not going to hold it against him. Uh, but he was starting to have this really clever idea that if we learn something about the motions of the planets... If we are able to write down simple mathematical expressions for how they behave, we can turn around and translate that into something useful for us. It took another hundred years for this to really come to fruition with Newton. Newton was the one who was able to make this connection that the gravity that we experience here on the Earth is the exact same force that keeps the planets in orbit around the sun. This this application of where he took his law of gravity, which is very simple, just a very, very simple mathematical expression, and just say, hey, it applies everywhere to everything, boom, done. That's it. That was a major leap in understanding. That was a major, major leap in, in thinking of how the universe works, that there is one equation or one set of equations that it can explain a variety of phenomena. Of course, now with gravity, we, we, we use Newton's gravity a lot, but it has been supplanted by Einstein's theory of general relativity. Uh, it makes it even more applicable. So there were some situations, some scenarios that Newton's gravity wasn't good enough to explain, wasn't universal enough. And then Einstein's gravity is even more universal than that. And when I mean universal, I really mean universal. The exact same mathematical equations, and Einstein's equations are a little bit more complex than Newton's, but that's okay. Excuse me. The exact same equations that we use to study black holes, or even know that black holes even existed, and to study them, and to study their mergers, and what's inside of them, the exact same equations used there are the exact same equations we use to compute your GPS location. The exact same equations we use to describe how, uh, a flight of a baseball after it's hit by a bat and its trajectory is the exact same equations we use to describe the tides or the speed of the moon in its orbit. It's the exact same equations we use when we're looking for exoplanets around other stars. We can't see the planet, but we can see that gravitational tug and the wobble on the star. Exact same equations. It's the exact same equations that led us to discover dark matter, right? By looking at the, the motion of stars inside of galaxies. The stars are moving way too fast given the amount of stuff that we see. Dark matter, it's a thing. It's the exact same equations we use to describe the growth of the biggest structures in the universe. It's just gravity. 
just gravity is how we get the evolution of the cosmic web, the largest thing in the universe. It's the exact same gravity that gives us the entire Big Bang picture itself, right? You can't have a Big Bang model of the universe without a theory of gravity, without general relativity, without this concept of an expanding universe that used to be smaller and hotter and denser. It is the exact same equation. So let that sink in. Let that sink in. The exact same math you use to compute satellite orbits or that you would compute when you drop something on your big toe and you can calculate the acceleration due to gravity. It's the exact same math used in that scenario as it is to study stars getting ripped apart by another star or black holes forming and merging or the history of the universe or the growth of the largest structures or the tides or the motion of moons and planets or exoplanets. It's all the same. That is the power of universality in physics. That is the power that we can write down one set of equations that describe a phenomena throughout space and throughout time that would, at first glance, would have absolutely nothing to do with each other. You would not think that black holes would be connected to a satellite orbit in the Earth in any way whatsoever, and yet we can use the exact same math to describe it. That is universality, and that is power. Next week, I'm going to give more examples of these universality in physics using other things than gravity. So see you next week. In the meantime, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And go to patreon.com slash pmsutter because it helps keep this show going. Thank you. I appreciate it. And see you next week.